that scripture? Hallelujah. Anyone believe that it's time to shout joyfully? I tell you, am I in the right house this morning? Anyone believe that he, we, we deserve that he deserves a shout of joy from us. He deserves a shout of praise from us. He deserves everything we have to give to him on this morning. Hallelujah. It said, let us sing to the Lord and shout joyfully, for he is our rock of our salvation. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's go to the throne of God in prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to come to your house one more time. Lord God, I don't know what may be weighing down your church members or weighing down your saints on today, but God, we ask for a garment of praise we've lifted on us on today. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, you will cover us, Lord God, with your wisdom, with your glory, with your power and your demonstration here on today. Lord God, we're seeking healing right now, God. We're seeking restoration for those who are downtrodden, Lord God. We ask right now, God, you will lift up the spirits of those who are here on today, Lord God, that we shall not live out the same way we came in, Jesus. Some of us need the heads lifted up, Lord God, and you are the king who can do so, Lord God. Lord God, lift up our heads, oh, you gates, Lord God, and the king of glory shall come in. Lord God, you are the king of glory. You are the king of righteousness. You are the king of majesty. And right now, God, we shout hallelujah to your name. Hallelujah to your name. Lord God, we thank you, Jesus, for what you're going to do in the midst of us on today. Lord God, have your way in our lives on today that you shall receive the glory, the honor. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Come on, let's enter into praise and worship with the team on today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we bless the Lord in the house on today? God, let your glory rise in this house. Let joy, let peace, whatever you need on today. Just give God the praise, and he'll release something on you for today. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us.
glory rise in the house, God, so that things can happen, miracles can take place. Hallelujah. God, let your glory rise in the place. Hallelujah. Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we thank you on today. Hallelujah. We bless your holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. Because you're worthy. You're worthy of the praise, God. You're worthy of the honor. And we bless you in the house. Come on, put your hands together one more time and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this broken vessel. You desire to abide in the praise.
Hallelujah. We were here for the homegoing service. But how many know that we can still celebrate God in the midst of that? We can celebrate God right now. Hallelujah. To, he has lifted up our souls. Hallelujah. Yes, he has. And he can keep us when we don't feel like being kept. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for your salvation, for your love, for your blood. Hallelujah. For one day we all have to meet Jesus Christ. But while we are here, let's celebrate his name and give him the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for keeping our church members of that travel to Clemson. We thank God for keeping them safe. Hallelujah. No casualties. Hallelujah. That's enough to give God a great shout of praise. Glory. Hallelujah. We thank God for knowing and seeing ahead of us. Hallelujah. What we may have to face, but God has, is a keeper. Hallelujah. We thank you for his grace and his mercy. Hallelujah. And it endures forever and ever. Hallelujah. Can we thank God for our bishop on this morning? God bless you, sir. Come on, let's thank God for our bishop. And first lady, amen, in her absence. We continue to lift you up, hallelujah. As you stand to give to us, hallelujah, on today. We thank God for it. He's staying on the wall and still interceding for us. Hallelujah. Let's thank God for the Clark family, entire Clark family. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Anyone seeking anything from God on today? I, I declare it seems like there's a weight in the church this morning. But I believe in God to move in the miraculous, to do something new in our lives. But you have to step into the water. You have to make some, some moves on your own for God to see you oh, on this yes. morning. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 I need some things done in my life. I, did not Bishop say the portal is open. This is the season. Yes, God. Whatever you seeking God for, come on. Believe in faith that it shall be done. I'm starting today. Hallelujah. If you didn't start on the 25th, go on and start today. Claim some things. Speak some things into the atmosphere. Believe God shall perform his promises. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I'm getting, I'm starting up my own self. I was a little slow moving this morning, but I'm starting up my own self. Hallelujah. So if I have to start up my own self, what you going to do for your own, for you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put on a garment of praise on this morning because I believe in God shall do just what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to move from before you, but can we just bless the name of Jesus one more time? Like you mean it. Like you thank him. Like you love him. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we
mighty God. He's able to do that which you need him to do on today. Amen. Amen. You feel a little bit better, I hope. I hope you feel a little bit better. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Bishop Clark, you want to come with observations at this time? Come on, let's stand to our feet for our bishop. Hallelujah. As he come before us with observations on this morning. Amen. Come on, let's bless God for our presider. Get on the seal. Gabriel. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. We thank the Lord for you being here, for our being here. Amen. Thank God for the praise team as always. Amen. And support these musicians. Come on for Brother Carrie, who's assisting in, assisting us. Amen. In the absence of Jeremiah. Thank you, Brother Carrie, so much taking time out of your busy schedule to be here today. We know that there's a lot of things going on and so forth, but thank you, uh, our family, again, thank all of you for the support for the loss of our mother, uh, for your cards, your gifts, your, your, your presence, uh, just everything that was done, amen, everything, amen, everything that all of you done, we, we're grateful, the Clark family is, is grateful. I, I'm sure Mother, um, if she would have, um, you know, would have been here, I mean, we know that in her spirit, uh, she would have been pleased with what took place, amen? Uh, that was Mom, and um, but we are grateful for everything, for the calls, the cards, every gift that was sent. And thank God for the, the praise team again, for and the musicians that showed up, and all of the pastors and, and all of you, amen. Uh, my heart just was uh, just overwhelmed by the support that was given uh, to us um, this past week, amen. And uh, I even thank, some, thank you for, for those that remember my birthday. I forgot, uh, but you remember, some of you remember your call and text, uh, and I'm grateful for that, amen. But during that time, I wasn't thinking about anything other than just trying to get through with what we had to do for the, the following day. Uh, then we thank you for support on Friday, those that came down on Friday night to Bishop McCoy to support us. Amen. Uh, we had a great time, and I, I appreciate your travel uh, to come that far and to support us. Well, many, it really meant a lot uh, to be there because I, I know I'm talking to Sister Valdez, they said they left at 3 o'clock, and they didn't get there until about 7.30, ran into some accidents and so forth, and, but uh, yet it's still, they, God saw them through, amen, and so thank all of you, amen, I won't call any names, you get any calling names, but I thank you for it, amen, for just coming, you, you just don't know what it, what it means to have support uh, from people when you're away, and it means it does, does your heart good to see, uh, amen, some familiar faces, amen, family members. I want, want you also to remember, uh, I was saying, Gambler alluded to it, we had, uh, how many people, Brother uh, Deacon Blessing Game was involved in an accident yesterday, the church van got hit from behind, and it was knocked into another car. Uh, so how many people were involved? About eight, eight people. Uh, who, who were they? Just stand up and tell us, because I don't know. Sister Sarah Paul, Sister Eula Clayton, or Chris Clayton, a daughter, a granddaughter, a granddaughter, okay. Sister Stephanie Johnson, Catherine um, Willingham, who? Stephanie Johnson, Lamar Deacon Johnson, and who else? Oh, Brother, uh, Brother Cooper, okay. Wow, and you and Brother West. Come on, can we bless God that they're still alive? They're not, come on, we're not in mourning this morning. Amen. I'm telling you. I mean, they were, they were hit from my eye. He said that the man said he didn't even see them. How could you not see a big van? But that's why you have to drive for yourself and drive for others as well. But amen. We can get another van, but we can't get another person. Amen. So I know that that's why you probably don't see them here this morning. They're probably they're, they're sore. Uh, a lot of them I talked to Brother Cooper. He said that he, you know, was giving some muscle relaxers, relaxers and so forth. 
but it didn't really uh, help him that much. But, Amen. Uh, I'm just I just thank God that there was no Amen, no death in the, in the midst of uh, this. Amen. Because you see, listen. Any time the enemy attacks, his purpose is to try to. The Bible says he come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Amen. So it was his purpose were to take us, you know, take them out. But God, but the angel of God, amen. But God, amen, I promise you, it's because of God. So let us remember them in our prayer. Also, Sister Monique, you might have heard Monique um, had had a baby. They took the baby from her. She's in the hospital, Greenville Hospital. Uh, so remember her. The, 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 the baby's force is premature. Has two, has two. But we believe in God that God is going to allow the baby to live. Amen. That the baby should live and not die. To declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There will be a testimony of what God is able to do. So let us remember Sister Monique. Amen. And, and her family at this time. Again, today uh, the, all the ushers and greeters need to meet with Sister Stephanie. Minister Stephanie Johnson. Uh, Sister, oh, well, she's really a minister. I ain't gonna, they ain't going to make no bones about it. Minister Stephanie Johnson. Meet with her. She want to meet with the ushers and greeters in the conference room immediately out to church today. Then remember all of the rest of the people that are sick and shut in. Just remember them. And last but not least, I want to thank Sister Carolyn Pinkett, who's out today. But we had a great program last Sunday afternoon. Amen? <laughs> last Sunday afternoon. The evolution of music. I'm telling you what. If you missed it, you really, really missed a treat. It was great. Sister, uh, your, uh, Sister uh, Brother Pinkett's mother she got up here and she just got the mic and began to talk about uh, about those. I mean, did you just? I was amazed about the the note note singing and all that da da ra da and all, boy, I'm telling you, she knows it and like the back of her hand and she just gave us a look. You know, just I said, wow. But I was just really totally impressed with every everything and everybody. What was taking place? Yes, sir. You still standing? You you got to go to the restroom? You may be. You could you could be. Uh, you, I thought you were ready to ask permission. You don't, you don't need permission to go. You can go, uh, man. You can go. You're released. Uh, what you need, I think. No. Okay. Okay. Amen. Amen. Well, well for, before we clap for that, let's bless uh, Deacon S. Ed because she gave you permission. <laughs> Like, oh, put your hand there. You put the hand there. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Deacon Evans. Thank you so much. Amen. I know your wife didn't give you permission, but thank you. Thank you, Deacon Evans, for allowing him to be out, out of your presence for a little while. Amen. But thank you, Deacon. Um, blessing game. Make make sure, Elder Wynn, we make copies of all of these, so you know, of everything that we turn into to the insurance and Amen. Properly, you you get compensated. Amen. Anybody else was in the van that wasn't in the van? <laughs> y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all so deep. Oh, come on. All right. Yeah, you know how it is. Have get somebody get money. Everybody was in the van. <laughs> oh yeah, Larry, were you in the van? Yeah, oh, I was there. Yeah, yeah your knee. <laughs> oh, your knee. Right. Okay. That's how it goes. I'm serious. That's how black folks do it. Y'all, y'all know how they do it. Some money come here if I was in the van. <laughs> and about 25, all right, never mind. <laughs> all right. Glad to have Brother Parker. Come on, let's bless God for Brother Roosevelt Parker. He had surgery a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago. He's going through some extensive, uh, amen, therapy, amen, because of his shoulder. But he's pressed his way out today. And so I bless God for seeing him, amen. We believe God is going to allow him a speedy recovery, amen. Uh, during this time. Sister Kate, are you cold? Are y'all cold? I see you wrapped up. Okay. All right. Are you cold? Y'all are? Deacon, okay, he's turning, he, look, he, why he was saying, he, look, uh, Ella Gabriel, he rises, he's turning it down. Okay, remember this, uh, Ella Gabriel, when it get cold, let, let it just stay cold, okay? Don't turn no heat on. Just let it stay cold, all right? Let their cold, amen. All right, anything else from anybody? We're going to go so glad for everybody, but really, really. Yes, sir, Deacon uh, El Elder. You mean, mean what now? Jay Peters? 
Okay, October the 3rd at 7 o'clock, all men and women, just men? Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't going to touch that. All right, he said on Women's Day, they can go out. All right, so I guess he told, told y'all ladies. He did, amen. Y'all get, get mad at him, don't get mad at me. I'm just letting say, women, you go on your own day. All right. All right. Uh, anything else? So glad for every, amen, to see everybody. Hey, I'm serious. I, I, I love you, Kingdom Vision. I thank God for you. Um, and I, I don't take what the Lord uh, have given me lightly. Amen. I, each, each one of you uh, are an integral part of my life. And I'm grateful for you. Amen. I really am. All of the youth. Uh, for everything that you've done. Amen. Uh, so I really, really thank God for you. All right. Anything else? For me? Yes, sir. Deacon uh, Jones. Okay. What, from what time to what time? Okay. The first fry uh, for the deacon is, is this Friday, this Saturday, rather. Also, yeah, from 9 until, amen, by m and J's barbershop. I guess in that little middle place between m and J and that the other place there. Okay, all right. So let's go buy and buy some fish and uh, chips or whatever they sell. And I don't know, hush puppies? Yeah. Y'all going to have some hush puppies? No hush puppies? Okay. Y'all well, know where hush puppies come from, right? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all so funny. I'm <laughs> Larry, my brother, how hush puppy started, Larry had a dog. Uh, Larry, my brother had a dog. And he had a baby. I uh, had some babies in. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the little. <laughs> and the, the babies got the wine and the dog got the wine. So Larry said, hush puppy. <laughs> and from that point on, they start calling them hush puppies. So that's what <laughs> That's where they come from, amen. So my brother started something, amen. Had no idea that he was going to name some food after it, amen. But hush puppies, all right. Oh. <laughs> all right. Uh, I know some of y'all so saved, y'all can't even laugh. <laughs> oh, God, all right. Anything else from anybody? All right. Yes, sir. Did you say something? <laughs> it's a Sir, stand up, stand up, stand up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Someone left the door open uh, to the to the church. They came down. What Saturday? Was it Saturday? Saturday. The the back door was open to the was the fellowship hall. The kitchen door. So whoever whoever were here, you left it open. That means that if you left it open, you couldn't set the alarm, and you knew that you couldn't set the alarm, so something was wrong. As a matter of fact, the panel will tell you you know, what door is open. Amen? So please, sir, please, ma'am, that that's, you know, someone could have came in and, you know, and, and just messed up the whole ministry or stole everything. So please, sir, please, ma'am, uh, be careful. Make sure when you're going to come in and make sure you secure the building before you leave. Amen? Uh, that's that's is on, on the serious note. Please make sure you secure the building because we could uh, be... Uh, you know, someone could come in and did some, some major damage to the to the ministry. Or, and we could be, uh, be in a different place on today, man. But there's a new law that, that just passed a couple of weeks ago requiring all churches to have the our air conditions uh, covered, all air conditions. And those air conditions that, that are not covered, um, I was, it was explained to me that uh, then the insurance will not pay for the theft are the air conditioning so because they have so many thefts of, of, of the air, you know, air conditioning. So I'm in the process of having someone, uh, we already got the measurement, and we're going to get uh, these uh, air conditioning, all eight of these, of these big units covered so that that will protect us, amen, from the uh, thieves, amen, from when they want to come in and steal some stuff. All right? So if you know of a pastor or know of a church, you need to make mention to them that pastor. I tell them uh, the law that has been passed in the state of South Carolina. Uh, 
so that you want to make sure that they're covered, you're covered with, with what's going on. All right, anything else? All right, at this time, we're going to ask uh, the finance committee to come, if you will. Uh, just come come to, to the front, if you will, while I'm up. I'll just go ahead and do it uh, since I'm up. So we ask that you get your tithes and offerings ready. Um, and we thank you for your giving. We can't do what it is that we need to do and keep these doors open without your money. So, and so I, I appreciate for those of you that has been consistent in your giving. Amen? Amen. Because it, it, it helped us do what we're able to do about that. Would you stand? If there's one that needs a tight envelope, would you raise your hand? And the ushers will get it uh, to you, uh, get one to you. But the scripture says in, in, in Luke 6:38, it says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For the same measure that you met with all shall be measured to you again. So we want you to, the Bible, you know, uh, the only way that you can give, or get rather, is that you give. The Bible says he loves what? A cheerful giver. And so if you give, I promise you God will give back to you. Uh, then he tells you how he's going to give it back to you. Good measures. You know, press down, shake it together, and run it over. And he'll give back unto you. Amen. So would you raise, raise your tithe before the Lord? Say, so, Lord, I give back to you what you've given me. Now, Father, I thank you for an overflow blessing in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, from wherever you are, come and bring your tithe and your offering. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. Father, we ask your blessings upon these offerings that was given, that you multiply them for the need and meet the need of this ministry. We thank you in advance for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you. All right, put your hands together at this time for the praise team and the combat before you. And then the next voice you will hear will be none other than our own very own prophet of the uh, hour, our prophet of the ministry. Prophet William Robert Hargrave. Well, why, is it William Robert or Robert William? William Robert, okay. William Robert Hargrave, amen. The uh, prophet of King of Vision, a dear friend, uh, a minister here, a bishop here, and we want you to stand. I believe that God has uh, empowered him, amen, with the word that we might be impacted on today like never before, amen. Amen. Remember, this is the year of what? Release. Amen. Re re the year of, I promise you, it's, this is the year of release. I got a call. I don't have the time to go into it, but I got a call just from my son telling me about what happened for my nephew, or one of my nephews. So I'm telling you, this is the year of release. That God is releasing some stuff. Amen. So I'm grateful. All right. Put your hands together for this magnificent praise team. Amen.
to go back to all, all, all men. Do it again.
Somebody say, yes, Lord. Say, if my neighbor don't believe he's here, I believe he's here. Tell him, I thank him for everything and for everybody. If you thank God, then just tell God, thank you. It ain't no shame. Tell him, thank you. One more time. Tell him, thank you. Give God a hand clap as you take your seat. There's a craziness in the air. Something is going, getting loose from heaven. Can I do the right thing first? I honor Bishop and his wife. Let's give them a hand clap in her absence. An awesome man of God. All of my training, all of my Wherever I am now is because of God through him. Amen? Can you say amen? And to my lovely wife, to my friend, listen, your friend will tell you the truth, but your friend will always be your friend. I thank God for my lovely wife, and I thank God for what she has put up with with me. I know y'all think I'm all that spiritual. No, 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 no. My wife knows where I'm at. Somebody say amen. To Laney Janey in the back, thank God for her. Give her a hand clap. To my daughter, to my grandkids, to the Hargrave family. The Lord, had, I had woken, and one of the most weirdest things that happened to me, a lot of things happened to me I call weird because... When God is moving, he does things to us. Somebody say amen. Bishop, I want to thank you for what you've carried this church to the point you've carried this church. I want to thank you for how you have blessed us with your words of encouragement, with the word of God. And I feel like I'm a better man now than I was when I first got here. Somebody say amen. And now while I was talking to the Lord and I was shedding tears, thanking him for this man, the Lord said to me, <laughs> he said, you say he's on your heart. But the Lord said, you got to have his heart. Anything on something will fall off. I got sad. I said, oh, Lord. He said, listen to me closely. He said, the bills, you can walk away from them. He said, but he can't. He said, when you get tired of giving, you can stop giving. He said, but he can't. He said, but when he's not sleeping at night, you're snoring. And don't even know you're in the world. Somebody say amen. And, and he said, in order to have his heart, you got to have all of that. Somebody say amen. Give God a hand clap for Jesus. Listen, this is where he, where he ended, up, ended up the last service. He was talking about our reactions to interruptions. Somebody say interruptions. And he asked us a question. He used even an illustration uh, Sister McNeil, when you know that you have prayed a prayer and seem like it's been released and it's on coming to you, but all of a sudden there's a hindrance. Somebody say amen. And look like there's breaks been put on the prayer. But we have learned that with what's going on in this earth right now and what Bishop have been doing a study about, and I enjoyed uh, him Friday night as he carried us into the glory zone. Somebody say glory zone. And I appreciate where he has carried us. It started on, I believe, on Friday night that Bishop was talking about the glory down in uh, Columbia at Bishop Johnny's church. And one of the most strangest things, Sister Pam, listen to me. If y'all never believe me, you can call me a bald-faced liar. I saw Jesus. He had a white tunic. He had a red sash. And he walked up into front of the pulpit. And Bishop was a little bit up in the air. You know where, how 
uh, Bishop Johnny's church is built. And he just stood there and smiled, y'all. And when he smiled, then he just kind of went in the background. And all of a sudden, Bishop, I called you Bishop Blessing Game. Watch out. Brother Blessing Game, all of a sudden, we started getting shocked like somebody was putting an electric plug to us, Sister Blessing Game. And the service was crazy. One lady got shocked up off the seat. She, like she went to the floor, from the seat to the floor. I know the difference in the presence of the Lord. Listen to me closely. There's the presence of the Lord. All of us can just wave our hand, the presence of the Lord. But I'm talking about where you ain't waving your hand, doing nothing. You just sitting in that chair and all of a sudden, bam, off the seat you come. The Lord just sent me to give you a few tidbits that we need to watch out for because this is going to happen in this place. What I want to tell you, it looks like I'm not going by any notes. What I want to tell you is, I'm going to show you in this scripture that when God, or that when Jesus gets up off his throne and he comes down to earth to see about his word, about his servant, about his people, when he does that, how many know Jesus brings an escort with him? When the president come, they make an announcement. The, all rise, that's what they say. Somebody say all rise. The president of the United States, President Obama, is in the area. But watch this. If it had been President Reagan, if it had been President Bush, if it had been President Eisenhower, the same respect would have been given to the office. Somebody say amen. And what I'm telling you is, it's going to help you now when you pray that you start looking for things because on this man's life, he have paid a price for this anointing. And what this does, it provokes the glory into the cloud. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to let Bishop Rice do some reading. Let me, let me just give you this first before I ask him to read. Interruptions are here because of the glory, okay? And some of the book definitions is to hinder or to stop by breaking in. Another one is to break the uniformity or the continuity of a thing. In other words, in the book of Psalms it says, when the enemy comes at you one way, God will send them back several different ways. The correct way to say that, Brother Larry, is God will blow the enemy up. How many know fragments come out all over the place when the enemy is blown up? Okay, then let, let, let me give you just these little short definitions. One purpose of interruption, this is from God's view, okay? You might have something else. One purpose of in interruptions from God's perspective is to restore what you had that you lost. Anybody lost anything in here? How many want it restored? Put your hand back down. Another definition, we ain't got but three, another purpose of the interruptions is to take away what you have and give you something else that you never had. How many of you ready to experience that? <laughs> huh? How many want something that they never had? How many tired of the same old usual everyday grind? Come on, y'all. How many ready to come home and, and, and uh, somebody beat you at the door and said, the mailman dropped this off and it's a certified letter and I couldn't drop it off without you signing it. And by the way, it got to be some money because the insurance on it had to be a certain amount to send it through the mail. How many of y'all ready for that? Clap if you're ready for that. Come on. Listen to this. These are the words that God gave me. If you got a pencil, you can write them down. Watch this. 
is just as strange as I'm standing right here. He gave me the word visitation. That's one of them. He gave me the word revelation. He gave me the word aggravation. He gave me the word urgency. He gave me the word frequency. And then he gave me the last word, which is consistency. I looked at these words, Brother Larry. I said, what in the world is going on? First of all, Brother Larry, he gave me the word to describe his plan that's getting, not getting ready to take place, but that is taking place in the glory. Watch this. He showed me this. The number one thing, the number one word that should be at the beginning, he told me to reshape these. He said, the first thing is urgency, which calls for immediate attention of utmost importance. Listen to this. Y'all hear me clear. I want you to hear what I say. There have been some God decisions that have been made in heaven already. Now, i tell you what. Let me slow it down a little bit. Bishop Rice, could you read those two scriptures for me, please? And then I'm going I'm to reiterate what, what the Lord gave me about these words. Just hold on right there with urgency. Utmost importance. Important. Come on. Here's me. But I would have, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we, we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall de descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the Son of God, man be. For as, as in these days, I'm sorry, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that no entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, and the other left. Here's the first word, urgency. Usually, how many, just look at me for a moment. How many agree that when you're watching TV, you're enjoying Clemson Tigers? I'm enjoying them. All of a sudden, at the bottom of the TV says, news alert. Raise your hand if you ever if that ever happened to you. And then your curiosity goes forth to the bottom of the screen. Amen? That depends on whether the Clemson get beat to death or 
of whether they win it. I see Brother Humphrey shaking his hand. No, that, no, 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 we can't have that. But back to the point, at the bottom of the TV screen says news alert. All of a sudden, the game is not as important now because something has happened. God said that in his kingdom, there's been a news alert. And that news alert is about this earth. Also, sometimes what really get us is when at the bottom of the screen, we see weather alert. And, and, and Brother uh, Larry, the Lord spoke to me about four or five years ago and said, thunderstorms will never be normal again. He said, from them, tornadoes will come out of them. He said, from them will come hurricanes. He said, from them, flooding will take place. How many agree right now we're getting more rain we ever seen? My point is, the first word that I told you was urgency. Here's what it is. A God decision is a decision that the saints nor the enemy can pray away. Did y'all hear that? Bishop, that's only people like yourself and Moses. When God said, let me go down there and utterly destroy the people. He, he didn't say, let me go down there and spare Aaron. Let me go down there and spare Mir Miriam. He said, let me go down there and utterly destroy them. And Moses, I'll give you some other people. That's the only time when Moses said, but Lord, they'll say you just brought us out here in the desert to kill us. The Bible says that the Lord repented of that. Not that he was what? Wrong, but it was just the fact that he had a target date to deal with the sin. The Lord is telling all of us, God has a target date for this sanctuary in front of your face. God going to get up in our face and show you the stuff that you say you hadn't seen. If you believe that, jump on your feet and give God a hand clap. Say, show sure enough now. Say it like you got an attitude. Say, show sure enough now. My God, my God. Okay, the next word. Listen to me real good. In the order it should go, visitation. Visitation, a special provision or dispens dispensation of divine favor or wrath. Also a severe trial. Watch this. Under the glory, God can come and curse and bless at the same time. Under the glory. How many of y'all believe that? Our other scripture is going to be in the 26th chapter of Acts. You're going to find Saul was on his way to have the Christians murdered, killed. He wasn't playing around. But yet and still, he saw a bright light. This is where he's making his defense before King Agrippa. And he saw a bright light. Watch this. Brother and sister, blessing game. When the Lord shows up in the glory on your step, don't worry about your husband because he's going down too. The kids going to hit the floor. If it's real bright, it's going over there to that neighbor that worry you to death. They going down. God, in this scripture, has shown us that regardless of which one God is calling or to have chose to do ministry, when the glory comes, everything got to obey. And when he comes like that, can I help 
me and you out. Those angels, Bishop, are on assignment, Brother Humphrey. He can go up there right now where your wife may not be feeling good or not. He can walk in there right when you hug her and all of a sudden, here comes the glory. Both of y'all in the flow, just like you've been born all over again. Her body will be healed. She'll be doing like this. But you know what I like about her? At least she's trying. And watch this. And all them things, Bishop Rice, that you've been praying about, them things that have been upsetting you, that you have to keep on your heart. In the glory, brother, it can be gone in one second. Paul's sin was dealt with. It was killed. It was cursed. In other words, it didn't last no more. And all of a sudden, here he is. He's already cleaned up and ready to be sent on a mission. How many know that Saul really was going to kill somebody? How can that happen, Bishop Rice? How can a person be headed to your house with a gun? And they say they're going to get even with you. And because God has covered you through our leader, the angel that's assigned to your house walks around the house and takes the person out. And all they remember three days later is, I saw a bright light. Somebody say, it's my time to see a bright light. Say it again. One more time. Say, it's my time to see a bright light and give God a hand clap. Listen to this. Hold on. We're going to get through. Revelation. Everybody knows that. That's the last book in the Bible, but listen to it out a different way. The third order, an enlightening or an astonishing disclosure. Watch this. Listen to this real good. This is for this church. Inside of Revelation, what's inside of Revelation? Comes manifestation. <laughs> God is getting ready to show up for us because we feel like some things have been held up. Some of us feel like we've been robbed. I see somebody at home just, can I talk to you? Is it okay? The Lord says to me, he said, when you put on a temper tantrum, he said, you act just like your child when your child was five years old. He said, that's why I can't do things is because some of the saints in you are putting on temper tantrums when I don't come when I'm supposed to. I'm already in the front of the line. Are you going to get in the line? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've ever been like that. Come on now. Come on, come on. And, and because of that, our blessing is delayed. Watch this, watch this. I have a word for the band. He just gave me this. And I had prayed with Bishop about the band. I'm not going to act like I didn't, but I did. But just then, somebody say this with me. Say, there's a plan for the band. Stand up and give God a hand clap. Say it again. There's a plan for the band. Turn around one time and say, it's show enough. It's show enough. It's show enough, it. I just heard somebody say in their spirit, what about my house? Your house too. Catch it. Pull it down. Pull it down. I'm pulling it. I'm pulling it down. Pam might be a real estate agent, but I'm pulling my own real estate down. I'm pulling my own keys. I'm pulling my own yard. I'm pulling that screen in back porch. I got it. I got it. 
Listen to me. One more time. I'm going to be out of, out of your way. Then the fourth word is aggravation. We all know. How many of y'all been aggravated in here? We just talked about it. Raise your hand. To rouse to displeasure or anger by being persistent. Listen to this. The Lord said for this congregation, he's coming to aggravate the devil's work. He's going to cancel it and he's going to kill it. Under the glory. Say it, glory. The Lord said there are some small fires in here. Somebody, you weren't in that prophecy that Bishop gave where he said three days and go to that person. I told him I wanted to be sure. I apologized to my wife because I told my wife, now I'm one. I'm just like her. She like me. Oh, yeah. I used to didn't say nothing when I first got married. I wouldn't say a word. But we switched places. I became her. She became me. She don't say nothing as me to rip off something. Come on. Okay, y'all want to be, you want to be blessed by the glory? Be what? Honest. Say it again. Be honest. Say it again. Be honest. So here you go. Aggravation. To rouse, to displeasure or anger by being persistent. Listen to this. I've already said. Now here's another word. Watch this. The Lord said, your and my frustrations will become the enemy's aggravation under the glory. Watch this. Well, you know what that means? All them times he's been on our back, just carrying, just beating us down, 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 down. All the time. Seems like he just, sometimes you think he's winning if your faith ain't up. Somebody say Amen. The Lord said he's getting ready under this glory, I promise you, that he's going to end a lot of our frustration. Wait a minute to the fifth one. I'm going to get out of your way. How long have I been up here? Fifteen minutes? Hold on. One minute. Frequency. How many know that if you don't put the radio on the right channel, the first question somebody asks, one of two, do you have the radio on the right what? Channel? Or do you have it on the right frequency? Do y'all understand that? Listen to this. Frequency means happening often. In other words, what God is going to do, watch this, and I'm going to tie this in with consistent. Consistent means uniformity means agreement or harmony in parts of different things. So what that mean together? That means the Lord is going to do this thing that he's going to do. He's going to do it often, and he ain't going to miss a day doing it. How many know that when the flood came, 40 days he said it, he didn't let up till the end of the 40 days. What he going to do, because the, the devil been aggravating us in some areas, he going to put it down on him, hold him down, and he ain't going to let him move till he get ready to let him up. Somebody say amen. Praise God. That's those six words. And this is what he told me also. The Lord said there's going to be another recurrence of these words. He said, under the glory. He said it's going to be another occurrence. In other words, these words are going to come up again. How many of y'all believe that? Come on. We're going to get out of here. Hold on. Hold on one minute. Bishop Rice, read Acts 26 chapter, those three verses, please. Let me see what time it is. I need to hurry up. Right. Okay, I'm going to just talk. With it. Let me help, you out. help me out. Somebody say help me out. 
Point at yourself. Say, help me out. Now, I know, we know this man. And, and, and I'm going to say something, and I don't mean no harm. Sometimes, Sister Shelby, and I'm not saying you because I called your name, sometimes we say things that the apostle, with that apostolic anointing, God have given him to say. Watch this. One day we were, Bishop asked me to take up an offering. Oh, I was feeling good. And I was going to tell y'all, say, money, come it to me now. The Lord said to me, just as quiet, he said, don't you say that. He said, because the man who I gave those words paid the cost for the anointing to say those words. Here's what I'm getting in. Listen to me. Watch this. God does not give you gifts that he does not call you to use. Nor does he call you to do something for him without equipping you first with the necessary gifts. Somebody say amen. What is your call? Your call is your ministry. Or your call is the particular way or particular setting in which God uses you, wishes to use you. Say, for instance, the gift of teaching, that's general. But among children, that would be specifically my area. Watch this. The anointing is not going to fall on me to heal the sick. It's going to fall on me to deal with them children. Now, if one of them children are sick and I can't call nobody else, Sister Shelby, the Lord is going to let that anointing to heal come for their benefit because I'm in order. So go ahead and say amen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Watch this. I wrote this down to myself. If the anointing means power. Somebody say power. And also it is an enabler. It helps you to move in the gift. As you notice as I've been talking... I have not one time stopped and went, oh, Lord, interruptions, ha, and I see another interruption, ha, yeah, ha, whoa, and oh, now y'all laugh, and I actually asked God to let me preach like that, now I ain't going to get the truth out of y'all, I'm going to turn this way. How many of y'all have asked the Lord to let you do like that? I don't want to see him. I don't want to see him. I'm raising my hand. I'm raising my hand. Yeah, that, say it again. Come up here. Did you say aggravated? Come up here. Come on up here, Tar. Get up. Get up. God going to bless you. Just come up here. Just come up here. I want you to do something. Say what you said. Come on. Come on. Ain't nothing. See, see, see. There's something going to jump on her. You already, uh, you appreciate your leader. God, not, those angels are not going to do nothing to you. <laughs> Bishop holds them. I'm telling you. Say what you said. That they can be aggravating. Okay. Did y'all hear that? And what the Lord said to me, I ain't talking about to you. What he said to me, sis, your husband looking like uh, he can own two or three farms back there. Houses and land. You look like it. I don't, I don't know what that means. I hear the Lord saying you got a plan even now for the future. The Lord said you are an intelligent young man and you know how to do some things. I, there are some plans that you got that your wife don't know but her name is on the paper. Kurebaba. <laughs> I didn't mean to tell all the business. But guess what? When that time comes, I want my wife to be able to find what I got. And let me say this to you. 
Some of us men feel like we know our wives that if we give it to them ahead of time, it won't be there. Well, in my house, it's reversed. My wife give it to me. I'm going to bless and be the best. <laughs> what you need, Bishop Rice? Bishop Mike Rice might not need nothing. Come on, brother. Yeah, be blessed. How many know that we got to be led by the Spirit of God? Amen? Or you, both of you won't have nothing. Somebody say, you letting a woman run your house? Listen to this. Cause just because my wife is the conductor on the train, the engineer, she needs the railroad tracks. You let a track pop off. That big, heavy train. Come up. Sister Evans, jump up and say, show enough, show enough, show enough. There you go. Because if the railroad track come up, the ride is all over with. This commercial have come to you from heaven above and is sponsored by Jesus Christ and his blood and the Holy Spirit. You can get a copy of this at any store or in the back of your Bible under blessings. Run up here, Marcy, right quick. Hurry up. Run. Run, Marcy. I tell you what, Marcy, bring, uh, bring Sister Marie with you. Come on, run. We still on those six things that happen that God is going to do. I'm going to tell you a little bit because I think we're out of time. Okay, all right, come on. No, I want you up here, up right there. Don't, don't go this way. Just come this way. Tara, get up. Come on. Come on, come on Tara. Come on, I'm talking to you. You don't do that when the police ride up to the car. Me? You say, hands up. Why are y'all scared to walk up here? Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on up. Stop right there. Come on. Come on. I didn't tell you to back up. Come on now. Get right there. Right there. Right there. Come on right there. I tell you, put her between you. Put her between y'all. I speak prophetically to you, but I'm talking to them too. Because of your anointings, the Lord gave me the message for you, but he told me to send y'all up here. Because of y'all anointings, there's a price that you all have been paying. You have been hurt severely. I'm not talking about like I had a car. I'm talking about what I heard. I, don't, I ain't worried about what I talk. I'm talking about what I heard. Severely. Sharply. Y'all been cut. And it's because of your anointing. Hold both hands out like this, Marcy. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. No, 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 no. Just hold them out like this. I've seen you four, five, six times, seven times with two money bags in your hand. They look like they just came out of Wells Fargo fresh. Kore de la babasa. And on the bags, see, sometimes I move too quick. My wife always tell me, take it easy. It might be more he need to tell you. It was more. One bag had blessings on it. The other bag had ministry. The Lord said, ever since he blessed you through our leader to get behind this roster, that you have been ridiculed. Horribly. I heard you saying in your voice that I can't believe that I'm going to just say this person, that this person said that to me. This is what you said. You said, it's just like as if I'm not even standing here. You've been that way. 
Say yes. You've been that way. Say yes. Oh, y'all hands up. The Lord said what he's getting ready to do. And, 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 and I'm going to just talk. I had said something to Bishop about this. The Lord revealed to me that Jesus' anointing was not only because he fasted and prayed 40 days. He said because of the hurts, the disappointments, the abuse, the discouragement, the put down. I can't believe they're saying this. Here we go again. I'm tired of that. Your family coming against you. Other people coming against you. Thinking that everything's okay. I'm going to find a quiet place at, at work. And here they come at work. The Lord said to you right here, grab hands. Grab hands. Hold them up. Put your hands put them right over you. If you believe that God have come to deliver you from your aggravation, from your frustration, if you believe that in your heart, if you believe that, on the count of three, we're going to say, one, two, fire! Lord, give them revelation. Don't let them go to the floor and get nothing. Jesus! Don't let them go to the floor and don't get nothing. How many say, I don't want to just hit the floor and don't get nothing? Somebody say, glory. Watch this. I'm going to prove my point. Because of the price that he paid, and watch this, Sister McNeil. It ain't that I'm so fantastic and I got all this power. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. What it is, I've been obedient to the man. And he released me to do this. And Benjamin is standing up here on the pulpit. I tell you what, Teresa, grab, uh, come here, sister. Don't be moved. Don't be moved. Grab a hand. Go back there. Grab a hand. Go back there. Grab a hand. Go back there. Go back there. Tara, I want you to say a one word to them. You two, stand in front of them. One in front of the other, one in front of the other. Hurry up. Hurry up. Sister Joanne, the Lord have said to you he said don't try to make it hard he said I've been wanting to make you rich he said when you lose your mind that's when I'm going to put my mind in you somebody just challenged me what you mean lose your mind that means going crazy no correction correction the Lord means when we get ourself out of the way, he can bless us. Give God a hand clap. Lay hands on them ladies and say, go forth. That's good enough. That's good enough. Let them go. All, and get the ladies up. Sister Pam, come up here. I just want you to stop right here. Come here. Come on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Stop right there. Can I just shake your hand again? The Lord said that I'm your father. That's what he said. Yes. She really loves a father image. She loves somebody strong. She loves somebody to say what they say, mean what they mean. She said, I'd do anything if I could get that attention again. And the Lord said, I'm your father. I have come. He said, to set even those headaches in your head. To set you free. And I heard him say, get busy on my agenda. 
get ready. Yes, your daddy is talking from heaven. Your daddy. That's what he said. He said, I love you so. He said, that's who's been hugging you in the midnight hour when you be waking up crying. He said, you're special to me. And he said, I need you. Can you imagine that? God saying he needs us. Pam, he said he needs you. He needs you, dog. Turn on around one time. Let the people look at you. Say, I am what I am. But in a few minutes, I'm going to be something else. Touch you. Yay. Cool. Blame me for your hairdo. I just grabbed what I could grab. Sister Pam, if you had been in the military, I'd have made you a sergeant. Come here. Come here. You know what to do. Yes. Yes. You're prepared. You're prepared. Listen to me. You can't be in no other ministry. You know why? Because you know that man right there loves you. Say amen. Amen. You believe that, don't you? Yes. Now watch this. Sister Pam, gets, she got that. And don't apologize for talking like that. She got that yes. Oh, yes. She has to talk to uh, big people. Could you have a seat at my desk? I would like to talk to you. This time, I pray that in your office, the angel meets you, and when they come in, you're going to go crazy. You're going to go, ah! Somebody, when you could do that, God is in your presence. We love you, Sister Pam. Do you believe before you get to that seat, the Lord going to bless you again? You do? Do like this. The, the, that's your daddy's arms. That's your daddy's arms. Not, not my arms. Not Bishop's arms. But that's your daddy's arm. There's a few more people in here wish they could come up here and do this because they wish they had a daddy. But you do have a daddy, your daddy, your father in heaven. Amen? We love you, sister fam. You may have your seat. All right, it's time to stop. I was supposed to do some. Let me just give you a little bit right here. What is my point in saying all of that? Here's the problem. A lot of people, Bishop, they haven't been called. They haven't been chosen. And they're just working off what you told us the other day. Just because their gift is free, they think that that's their anointing. That's why things haven't been accomplished. Bishop, watch this. This is what the Lord is saying to me right now. He said, unless they go through you, he said, they phonies. Who is that for? That's for me, too. In other words, when you don't stay here and get the man's blessing, you can go out there 